Hi everyone, very good evening. Good evening guys, are we live? Yes, we are live, okay. So, so that's me, Dr. Sonal Parihar on your Unacademy uh, YouTube channel that is Let's Crack Neat PG and today's topic is, today's topic is, we will discuss diagnostic modalities in obstetrics. That means, in first trimester, second trimester and third trimester, we use what kind of diagnostic modalities use, karte hai, not just diagnosis of pregnancy but for fetal well-being as well. There are many tests, hai, biochemical tests, hote hai, biophysical tests. Hote hai, सोनोग्राफी होती है इमेजिंग टेक्निक्स रहती हैं क्लिनिकल टेस्ट होते हैं ये सब हम आज डिस्कस करेंगे ठीक है तो मैं हूं डॉक्टर सोनल परिहार मैं एक यूट्यूबर हूं और आ, मैं कंसल्टेंट गायनेकोलॉजिस्ट हूं अपने खुद के प्राइवेट हॉस्पिटल जोधपुर में एंडोस्कोपिक सर्जन ट्रेन कॉल्पोस्कोपिस्ट एंड इनफर्टिलिटी एक्सपर्ट मेरे दो यूट्यूब चैनल हैं आज के और गायनेकोलॉजिस्ट एंड अदर चैनल इज डॉक्टर सोनल ट्यूटोरियल्स आप उस पर जाके लेक्चर्स देख सकते हैं कभी भी आपको लगे कोई टॉपिक आपको सुनना है तो इन दोनों चैनल्स पर टॉपिक्स रहते हैं आप इनको देखिए ठीक है राइट right, सो so, अगर आपको सब्सक्राइब करना है प्लस सब्सक्रिप्शन जो कि मैं आपको फटाफट कई बार बता चुकी हूँ जल्दी से बता देती हूँ अन अकेडमी के जितने भी ट्यूटर्स अवेलेबल हैं नीट पीजी के लिए 19 सब्जेक्ट्स के लिए वो सारी चीज़ें आप अवेल कर सकते हैं बाई टेकिंग दिस सब्सक्रिप्शन प्लस प्लस सब्सक्रिप्शन जिसमें कि आपको मेरा कोड यूज़ करने से टेन डिस्काउंट मिलेगा ठीक है तो सब्सक्रिप्शन से यानी कि दीज आर पेड वंस और इसमें टेन डिस्काउंट मिलता है डॉक्टर का कोड यूज़ करने से एंड यू कैन एक्सेस एवरी सारे क्वेश्चन बैंक्स ऑल द पी नोट्स फिर आते हैं अगर आपको सिर्फ अन अकेडमी नहीं आपको प्रेप लैडर भी साथ में चाहिए प्रेप लैडर को अलग से खरीदने की जरूरत नहीं है बिकॉज वो इसमें मर्ज हो चुका है आइकॉनिक के सब्सक्रिप्शन में आपको अन अकेडमी और प्रेप लैडर दोनों साथ में मिलेगा इसमें भी आपको 10 परसेंट डिस्काउंट मिलेगा अगर आप मेरा कोड यूज करेंगे सो so बच्चों अगर आपका एग्जाम जस्ट अभी एक महीने बाद ही है तो फिर तो आइकॉनिक का कोई मतलब नहीं है अगर आपके पास साल भर है प्रिपेयर करने के लिए तो फिर आप आइकॉनिक के लिए जाओ क्योंकि प्रेप लैडर और अन दोनों साथ में मिलेंगे और कहीं भी बैठे बैठे आप किसी भी डिवाइस से सारे लेक्चर्स अटेंड कर सकते हैं सारे क्विजेज बैंक्स सारी क्वेश्चन बैंक्स सारी जो लाइव क्विजेज हैं ग्रैंड टेस्ट हैं जो कि होते रहते हैं अभी सत्रह तारीख को वापस है परसों तो आप ये सारे एक्सेस कर सकते हैं ठीक है और अभी बहुत अच्छे रेट्स चल रहे हैं ना प्रीवियस थ्री इयर्स के एम बहुत जरूरी हैं क्योंकि थ्री इयर्स क्यों क्योंकि पैटर्न चेंज हो गया पिछले दो तीन साल से जो पैटर्न आ रहा है क्लिनिकल पैटर्न वही आने वाला है तो इससे ज्यादा पुराने क्वेश्चंस आप मत करिए और ये लॉन्च हो चुका है ऑन द प्लस प्लेटफॉर्म अगर आप खरीदेंगे तो ये आपको एफ एम जी के सारे पेपर्स आपको मिल जाएंगे ठीक है अब आपको इन सब चीजों को अवेल करने के लिए यूज करना है हेल्पलाइन नंबर एटी फाइव 85 एंड 85 ये इनका हेल्पलाइन नंबर है इस पर कॉल करके जो जो मैंने बताया आप पूछ सकते हैं नहीं तो अन अकेडमी के ऐप को आप डाउनलोड करिए लर्नर्स ऐप को और उसमें सब्सक्रिप्शंस पे जाइए उसमें सारे आपको मिलेंगे प्लस आइकॉनिक और ये कि लाइट जो मैं बच्चों को कह रही हूँ बहुत अच्छा है बहुत यूजफुल है क्योंकि इसमें सिर्फ आपको नाइनटीन सब्जेक्ट्स की टेस्ट सीरीज हैं सिस्टम वाइज सीरीज हैं फुल लेंथ मॉक टेस्ट क्वेश्चन है प्रीवियस ईयर्स क्वेश्चन है एंड टेस्ट सीरीज है क्यूरेटेड बाई ऑल द टॉप एजुकेटर्स तो इसमें कोई पी डी एफ नोट नहीं है क्योंकि अभी एक डेढ़ महीने में आप कोई नोट्स नहीं पढ़ना चाहते आपको सिर्फ एम सी क्यू प्रैक्टिस चाहिए जिससे आपको समझ में आए कि थ्योरी को अप्लाई कैसे करना है एम सी क्यूज में ठीक है उससे भी नाइन्टी परसेंट थ्योरी रिवाइज हो जाती है सो गो फॉर दिस लाइट यानी कि बहुत सस्ता है और इट इज जस्ट टू थाउजेंड फोर हंड्रेड फॉर टू मंथ जिसमें सारे क्वेश्चन मिलेंगे उसमें भी आपको टेन परसेंट डिस्काउंट अलग से मिलेगा अगर आप मेरा कोड यूज करेंगे ठीक है तो इसको अगर आप टेन परसेंट डिस्काउंट के साथ देखें तो सिर्फ टू वन सिक्स जीरो टू थाउजेंड वन हंड्रेड एंड सिक्सटी का पड़ता है इसको ले लो बहुत अच्छा है बहुत से बच्चे ले रहे हैं एम सी क्यू प्रैक्टिस के लिए नौ छोटे डॉक्टर्स अपने हमारे छोटे छोटे बच्चे जो फर्स्ट ईयर में हैं एनाटमी फिजियो बायोकेम पढ़ रहे हैं उनके लिए भी कुछ लॉन्च हुआ है एक ऐप लॉन्च हुआ है अन अकेडमी के थ्रू आप इसको अवेल करिए हेल्पलाइन नंबर पे कॉल करके डाउट क्लैरिफिकेशन सीरीज स्टार्ट हो चुकी है सिक्स अप्रिल पे ओनली ऑन द प्लस प्लेटफॉर्म प्लस यानी कि पेड प्लेटफॉर्म होता है जो कि मैंने अभी आपको बताया और दूसरा प्लेटफॉर्म होता है स्पेशल क्लासेस ना इसमें भी मेरा कोड डॉक्टर सोनल डालने से आपको डिस्काउंट मिलेगा ठीक है नाउ कमिंग टू द लिस्ट ऑफ टॉपर्स जो कि लास्ट ईयर के टॉपर्स हैं और इस साल भी हम लोग वेट कर रहे हैं कौन कौन टॉपर निकलता है इस बार स्पेशल क्लास वो दूसरी टाइप की क्लास है जो अभी मेरी होने वाली है 
छः से सात और साढ़े सात से साढ़े आठ दो क्लासेज हैं आज जिसमें कि हम फ्री आपको पढ़ाते हैं इसके लिए आपको अनलॉक करने के लिए मेरा कोड यूज़ करना है दैट इज़ डॉक्टर सोनल डॉक्टर सोनल मेरा कोड यूज़ करेंगे तो ये फ्री क्लास आपकी अनलॉक हो जाएगी देन यू कैन एक्सेस यू कैन इंटरेक्ट विद मी ड्यूरिंग द क्लास पॉलिंग सेशन में आप पार्टिसिपेट कर सकते हैं आप अपना हैंड रेज करेंगे तो आई कैन टॉक टू यू आप अपना ऑडियो मेरे से बात करिए यू कैन नेवर मिस अ क्लास इफ यू रिंग द बेल बटन लेक्चर के नोट्स आप डाउनलोड कर सकते हैं अगर आपने इसको सब्सक्राइब किया है और कहीं भी बैठे बैठे एनी टाइम एनी वेयर ये लाइव क्लास आप देख सकते हैं सुन सकते हैं ये नहीं कि अगर आज आपने मिस कर दिया तो वो मिस हो गया आप कभी भी इस कोड को यूज़ करके अन अकेडमी लर्नर्स ऐप पर जाके इन क्लासेस को देख सकते हैं ठीक है ना हम बहुत जल्दी एम सी पे आने वाले हैं सात लोग हमको देख रहे हैं बहुत जल्दी एम सी पे आ रहे हैं नीट पी जी ये जो अभी ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट मे को आपका एग्जाम आ रहा है उसके लिए डेढ़ महीने का बैच बन चुका है बच्चों और ये बहुत ही जबरदस्त बैच है क्योंकि इस पर आपको दिख रहे हैं सारे 19 ट्यूटर्स लगे पड़े हैं आपको टेस्ट सीरीज देने में सारे नोट्स रिकॉर्डेड क्लासेस जो भी मैं पढ़ा रही हूँ सारे पी नोट्स आपको डाउनलोड करने को मिल जाएंगे ग्रैंड टेस्ट होते हैं जो कि हर दो दो हफ्ते से होते हैं अभी परसों वापस एक ग्रैंड टेस्ट है सत्रह तारीख को जिसके कि मैं अभी स्लाइड दिखाने वाली हूँ आप इसको एनरोल करो क्योंकि अगर अभी आपको क्रैश कोर्स करना है दिस इज द बेस्ट टाइम प्लस क्लासेस में सारी ट्यूटर्स के आप क्लासेस अटेंड करो जो जो टॉपिक आप नहीं पढ़ पा रहे उसको एमसीक्यू के बेसिस पे करो खुद कुछ करो कुछ खुद करो और कुछ टीचर्स के साथ करो बेस्ट टाइम है अभी पढ़ने का ठीक है देन इसी तरह से एफ का भी बैच दो महीने का बन चुका है इसमें भी आपके सारे टॉप ट्यूटर्स हैं और यह सब आप अवेल कर सकते हैं इसको खरीद के ठीक है एफ और नीट पी दोनों के लिए प्लस और आइकॉनिक दोनों अवेलेबल हैं ठीक है नौ सत्रह अप्रैल यानी कि परसों संडे को सुबह नौ बजे जैसे कि हम हमेशा बताते हैं आपको ग्रैंड टेस्ट है जिसमें कि सारे सब्जेक्ट्स का एक मॉक टेस्ट है तीन घंटे का लाइव रैंक प्रडिक्शन होगा वीडियो सोल्यूशन फॉर ऑल क्वेश्चन होंगे इन लाइन विद द लेटेस्ट एग्जाम पैटर्न होगा और एनहांस योर कंसेप्चुअल एंड क्लिनिकल लर्निंग ठीक है बेस्ट पार्ट इसकी वीडियो सोल्यूशन ऑफ ऑल क्वेश्चन मिलेगा आपको और क्या चाहिए आपका थ्योरी ऐसे ही रिवाइज हो जाएगा ओके सो दैट्स इट गाइज इतना ही मुझे बताना था ना के बारे में आज अब हम आते हैं एमसीक्यूज पे वेवलेंथ ऑफ सोनोग्राफी यूज्ड इन ऑब्स्ट्रेटिक्स बताइए इसका आंसर क्वेश्चन नंबर वन लिखिए क्वेश्चन नंबर वन और उसके बाद इसका आंसर लिखिए गुड इवनिंग सुरजना गुड इवनिंग मार्सलीन गुड इवनिंग लैंग पोकलैम ओके यू कैन नाउ आंसर इन इंग्लिश वेव लेंथ ऑफ द सोनोग्राफी अल्ट्रासाउंड यूज इन ऑब्स्ट्रेटिक्स कैन यू प्लीज राइट डाउन द आंसर ऑफ द क्वेश्चन अलॉन्ग विद क्वेश्चन नंबर Okay, because there is a lag in YouTube, so I don't know which question you are exactly answering. Can you write down the answer, please? Okay, guys, answer. Wavelength of ultrasound used in obstetrics. A bit confusing because they have not told you whether it's a trans abdominal ultrasound. or a trans vaginal ultrasound so now what do you do what will you choose okay obgy you are saying c anything else anybody else okay okay only one person answering anybody else wants to answer Okay, good evening, Rahul. So we have only one answer here, and that is OBGY student. You are right. It is three point five to five megahertz. Now, it is confusing because they have not asked you whether it is trans abdominal or trans vaginal, and they have given you both the criteria. Now, the trans abdominal ultrasound will use a lower wavelength of uh, frequency of three to five, and the trans vaginal will be five to ten. Okay, so OBGY, you are writing it wrong. Trans abdominal is. Uh, 3 to 5 that is a lower frequency trans vaginal is 5 to 10 but here the answer is 3 to 5 because they have not specified whether they are using tvs or tas and generally in obstetrics once the first trimester is over it is always trans abdominal so we will select the answer 3.5 to 5 okay so this that is number c all right then during ultrasound fetal abdominal circumference is measured at the level of what very easy question वी शुड नो वेयर टू डू द अल्ट्रासाउंड कहाँ से कौन सा लेवल हमको कट ऑफ करना होता है एंड हम उस पर्टिकुलर इमेज में 
जो बच्चे का जो हम एबडोमिनल सर्कम्फ्रेंस ले रहे हैं पेट ले रहे हैं ए सी कर रहे हैं ए सी मेजर कर रहे हैं उसमें हमको क्या क्या दिखना चाहिए सो वी शुड नो दैट ओके आंसर्स प्लीज ड्यूरिंग अल्ट्रासाउंड फीटेड एबडोमिनल सर्कम्फ्रेंस इज मेजर एट द लेवल ऑफ ओके ओ बी जी वाई यूर वेल रेड बच्चा यू आर डूइंग वेल एनी बडी एल्स सो इट इज स्टमक अम्बलाइकल वेन परपेंडिकुलर टू द स्पाइन राइट सो वॉट वी नॉर्मली सी इन दी एबडोमिनल अल्ट्रासाउंड वेन वी डू एन ए सी वी शुड हैव अ वेन अ वीनस शेडो हेयर एंड वी शुड हैव अ स्टमक शेडो हेयर दैट इज अ स्टमक बबल हेयर ओके एंड देन दे शुड बी द वर्टिब्रे द वर्टिब्रे शुड बी हेयर दैट इज अ स्पाइन one particular vertebra should be seen so that is the level of ac all right next at 9 weeks approximately the crl in millimeters of a fetus would be there is a formula for this if you remember if you have not read it then in the evening we will cover this in the special class okay 6 to 7 and 7:30 to 8:30 question number 3 yes that's a j shadow very good okay Dr. Giri, hi. Good evening. Answer this question. Question number three. At nine weeks, approximately CRL in millimeters of a fetus would be what? What is the uh, way you calculate it? How do you calculate it? Hint. I am giving you hint. Calculate it. Yes, Rahul. I am from Jodhpur. Okay. Now check if your answer is right, Doctor Giri. Just check. Number of weeks here it is nine. CRL we need to measure, so it will be weeks minus six point five. So how much will it be? Nine minus six point five. So what will be the answer? It will be two point five. ओके सो दैट इज हाउ यू कैलकुलेट अदरवाइज हाउ विल यू नो कि सीआरएल कितना होना चाहिए ओके वी नो द कट ऑफ लिमिट्स कि सीआरएल इतना होगा तो हार्ट uh, बीट होनी चाहिए अगर हार्ट बीट नहीं है सेवन मिलीमीटर से ज्यादा का सीआरएल है दैट मीन्स इट इज गोइंग टू मिस्ड अपॉर्शन ओके दीज आर द कट ऑफ लिमिट्स बट इफ देव गिवन यू आर रैंडम जेस्टेशनल एज एंड दे वॉन्ट यू टू कैलकुलेट द सी आर एल इन मिलीमीटर्स दैन दैट इज द वे ओके सो दैट इज टू पॉइंट फाइव मिलीमीटर्स ओके नाउ विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज नॉट एन इंडिकेशन फॉर एमनियोसेंटिस for chromosomal anomaly detection okay so not an indication for amniocentesis where is my pen okay that's my pen yeah amniocentesis and not an indication tell me question number 4 13 people watching come on i want all the answers why will you in which condition you will not do an amniocentesis you don't need to do an amniocentesis what is amniocentesis we take out fluid from the uterus around the baby and we try to do what chromosomal check of the baby because the baby's cells are there inside the fluid okay dr giddy anybody else yes ashutosh okay so that's a clear cut answer right that is gestational diabetes because what will you gain in diabetes nothing right you would not do an amniocentesis yes uh, langpoklum langpoklum okay right good fetal anemia is detected on doppler of what we do dopplers of uterine artery umbilical artery mca and we do all three so do you think fetal anemia will be detected by do doing dopplers of all or maybe one tell me question number 5 okay right 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 uh gestational diabetes and diabetes mellitus they may lead to certain kind of anomalies but in amniocentesis you are not detecting the you are not detecting the uh, structural anomalies caused by the diabetes it is mostly the chromosomal anomalies okay so you will not go for amniocentesis you'll go for a anomaly scan or retail scan question number 6 
Question number five, it is MCA. Yes, it is right. Middle cerebral artery because that is the artery which normally will have a uh, high resistance flow. But in anemia and in twin twin transfusion syndromes or RH eyes humanization, there will be a low resistance flow. Okay. On Doppler, the most ominous sign, the most dangerous sign indicating fetal compromise is increased pulsatility index in umbilical artery, increased SD blood flow ratio, uh, increased cerebral artery flow, yeah, for absent diastolic flow. See, the normal range, what I have seen in different labs is around 100 uh, to 110 for the fasting or you can say 90 to 110 for the fasting and for the PP it should be well below 140 okay so that is what we normally follow Dr. Giri that is the normal value that we follow okay 6 is D yes because that is the what is the normal flow there is a systolic flow and then there is a diastolic wave like this okay so that is that is exactly what is happening so this is the diastolic flow and this is the systolic flow so when there is either absent that is there is no diastolic or there is a reverse diastolic that is this is the most ominous sign the reverse one but here it is no reverse it is absent okay increased acidosis and hypoxemia is associated with question number seven normal doppler waveform there is acidosis and hypoxemia okay so normal doppler waveform increased fetal diastolic flow in the middle cerebral artery with absent diastolic flow in the aorta Presence of notch in the uterine artery, absent umbilical artery. So, which will be the correct answer? Dr. Shri, hi. Hi, Pragya. Okay. Tell me the answer. Question number seven. Dr. Giri, let me know, just type down, write down the, uh, the parameters that you have read because different books and different labs, they keep changing their parameters. But the normal one I would say will be 90 to 110, even up to 120, the fasting is okay because uh, pregnancy is a diabetogenic condition. And uh, in the PP, you can go even up to the level of 140, 150, sometimes even 160. But for a pregnant patient, 140 should be the cutoff limit. OBGY, yes, you are right. It is increased fetal blood diastolic flow in the middle cerebral artery because there is a brain sparing effect. Jabbi, whenever there is a fetal IUGR or any kind of acidosis, decreased flow of oxygen to the fetus, there is a brain sparing effect because the body wants that the fetus brain should not get affected. So whenever there is IUGR, you will see that the BPD and the HC measurements are good. It is only the abdominal circumference which decreases. That tells you that yes, there is an IUGR. Similarly, the blood flow in the MCA, that is the middle cerebral artery which is normally high resistance it becomes low resistance because the uh, oxygen flow to the brain has to be maintained okay so it becomes an increased fetal diastolic flow in the middle cerebral artery but in the other parts of the body it will be absent diastolic or reverse diastolic flow okay so that is basically the answer for acidosis and hypoxemia all right yes dr giri write it in the telegram group okay a G2P1 woman at 35 weeks pregnancy complains of decreased fetal movements. What is the next step? So she is a gravida 2 and she is around term, okay, 35 weeks in the last trimester. Next step is what? She is just telling you decreased fetal movement. What will you do now? So that is a spelling mistake. Will you induce labor? You will do a biophysical profile or scoring. You will do a contraction stress test. You will do a non-stress test or you will just observe. Tell me. Question number 8. Yes, okay. So that is right. We do a NST. NST is what? CTG, okay. That is a non-stress test. We simply do a tach tach uh, cardiotopography just like we do a ECG for an adult. Similarly, we do a cardiotopography for the fetus and then we check if the variability is low or if there is a deceleration uh, coming in or the accelerations are not up to the mark then we either repeat the test after giving some uh, high glucose diet or we do a biophysical scoring or we uh, send the patient for dopplers because now she's 35 weeks the dopplers will also tell you something like fetal hypoxemia or something like that okay but cst and bps cst is not required because contraction stress test is not done anymore so it is mainly ctg plus minus 
dopplers even the biophysical profile now the fetal movements the body movements the tone and the breathing movements nobody does that so doppler ctg plus the afi that is amniotic fluid index are enough okay so we go step wise ctg preferred i guess yes you are right uh, dr shree it is ctg which is the most significant finding in cardiotocography for the detection of fetal hypoxia okay late deceleration variable deceleration sinusoidal deceleration ya fir early deceleration which is most ominous finding <coughs> i have a very good lecture on my personal youtube channel um ask your gynecologist about how we interpret ctg this is for the layman people but i have actually told them exactly everything what you would like to know about ctg so for people who don't know anything about ctg go and check that there are more than 500 videos so open it on, open it on the laptop and then search for ctg okay okay so the answer is late deceleration yes because the late deceleration is if that is the baseline going here like this like this like this like this so that is the baseline of the fetal ctg okay so you will see a deceleration going below 15 sec uh, 15 beats and staying for almost 15 seconds and if there is a contraction coming here so the contraction is here and the deceleration is now starting at the peak and now coming down it is not coinciding it is not a mirror image of the contraction so that is a late deceleration okay so that is not good okay what will be a early deceleration early will be like this it will be coinciding with the peak of the contraction so that is still okay that is an early one and the variable ones the variable ones will be what they will have no uh, uh, there will be no coinciding with the no coincidence with the contraction okay so you all know that i don't need to draw this okay so that's it okay now sinusoidal heart rate pattern is seen in which sinusoidal soidal heart rate pattern so that is a baseline and this is the sinusoidal heart rate pattern okay so what kind of pattern what kind of condition will tell you that it is a sinusoidal heart rate pattern okay question number 10 all right so what is a battle door placenta we read that yesterday when the cord is inserted at the margins of the placenta succinctured placenta will be like this it will have another lobe okay so that will be a lobe attached to it so that is the succinctured placenta vasa previa is when there are membranes here and the cord is attached here and then there are blood vessels running here so that is vasa previa and placenta previa is simply placenta getting implanted at the lower segment that is placenta previa okay so yes so the answer is vasa previa anywhere where the fetus is going anemic when the fetus is losing blood or fetus is going anemic because of rh isomerization twin twin transfusion syndrome and other conditions there you can see a sinusoidal pattern which of the following explanations is not an explanation for decreased variability of the fetal heart tracing it is not an explanation fetal sleep state prematurity barbiturates and fetal stimulation which will not have a decrease variability that is another way to put the answer the the question okay question number 11 so variability is what variability is this okay that is with a variability and the variability is very very important for a healthy fetus so that is a baseline okay so you can see this is the variability so the decrease variability will be something like this something like this something like this okay so this is the decrease variability so where will you see that okay obgy d uh, d then a then d that is right it is fetal stimulation fetal stimulation will give you a, a variable a good variability you need to stimulate the fetus if the fetus is sleeping variability will be low when the prematurity is there less than 32 weeks where the autonomic nervous system is still not mature enough to give this variable heartbeat fetal sleep state yes you sometimes feel that the fetus is sleeping so you tell the mother you either stimulate the baby you just kind of palpate and you just kind of uh, uh, rotate the baby or just uh, uh, stimulate the baby give give some tactile stimulation or you tell the patient to go and eat some high glucose diet and then come back or barbiturates the sedatives which can cause decrease variability so it is fetal stimulation which will not give you a decrease variability it will be just the opposite yes good afternoon napoleon 
right consider the following reactive nst absence of deceleration and sinusoidal pattern okay which of the above finding is an in an antepartum ctg indicate fetal well being so fetus is absolutely fine in which of the conditions all three one two or any combinations of these tell me yes dr shree it was 11d now it is question number 12 tell me the answer okay harsh you are saying d that means 1 2 3 you think you think 1 2 3 all are indicative of a healthy fetus so it is 1 and 2 and that is right that is reactive nst reactive means it is showing a 15 beat acceleration st staying for 15 seconds in a 10 to 20 minutes recording and absence of deceleration sinusoidal is not good that is basically telling you that there is some infection or some kind of anemia in the fetus 17 year old uh, comes to an adolescent clinic with complaints of nausea and vomiting okay so she is an adolescent girl nausea vomiting she is pregnant she does not remember the date ultrasound shows vi viable pregnancy of 8 weeks which of the following statements regarding first trimester ultrasound is correct remember first trimester they are asking about the first trimester ultrasound okay so tell me which of the uh, statements are correct when it comes to the first trimester ultrasound a gestational sac can be first seen 2 weeks after after lmp the accuracy of the de determine, determining gestational age using ultrasound begins to decrease after the first trimester yolk sac is the first sign uh, on pregnancy on sonography and usg can be used to determine the sex of the baby harsh you are answering which question is it question number 13 you are answering obgy okay question number 13 you are saying b anybody else so a gestational sac can be seen 2 weeks after lmp is it right 2 weeks after lmp is just ovulation how can you see a gestational sac just at ovulation it will take at least another 2 weeks to appear okay at 4 weeks you see a gestational sac and yes you are right obgy yolk sac is not the first sign it is first a gestational sac and then there is a yolk sac and then comes the fetal pole then sonography can be used to determine the sex it is true but it is not true here because they are asking about the first trimester you can see the sex only after 11 to 12 weeks okay so that is not uh, just at the end of the first trimester this is just 8 weeks pregnancy okay so the answer is <coughs> the answer is accuracy of the determining gestational age using ultrasound uh, begins to decrease after the first trimester so that is answer b that is correct okay then a patient presents for her first initial ob visit after performing a home pregnancy test gives lmp of about 8 weeks ago okay now she knows that it was 8 weeks but she is not entirely sure however she has a long history of irregular menses what is the most accurate way to determine the gestational age you do the pelvic examination by uh, by manual examination you do a quantitative serum hcg value you do a crl testing on sonography or you do determination of progesterone level what is the best way to check that she her dates are accurate what is the best way 14 okay yes it is right it is crl it is the ultrasound which is going to tell you the exact gestational age and in the first trimester it is crl in the second trimester it is bpd and in the last trimester third trimester it is fn okay so these are the three parameters which give us the exact value and as the gestational will increase the accuracy of the sonography will decrease okay so sometimes we even negate we even tell the patient that your dates are wrong because the sonography is showing us a disparity of more than one week more than one week disparity means the lmp has to be discarded and you have to uh, follow what you have to follow the ultrasound parameters so the last question for today fetal weight also we can find by formula yes praveen you can there are many formulas hadlock's formulas and many uh, formulas are feeded they are fed in the machine itself a 28 year female g2p1 that is gravida 2 para 1 presents to antenatal clinic at 24 weeks for routine checkup okay now sonography shows a normal for gestational age at 24 weeks baby in frank breech position with no other abnormalities so the baby is frank breech how what is the most appropriate next step okay so 24 weeks means just at the, around 6 month sonography is showing the exact date and frank breech position what will you do now will you do a glucose challenge test will you do a culture for neisseria gonorrhea and chlamydia 
because normally it is done at initial visit and in certain high risk cases you do it at 30 to 36 weeks along with the group B streptococcal screening. Then ECV, then immediate LSCS or you do immediate induction in vaginal delivery. Okay, Harsh, you are not writing the question number. That is the last question for today and then we meet again at 6 p.m. on the Unacademy special class platform and we will do quickly the diagnostic criteria. Quickly summarize everything. Yes, you are right. No need to bother with breach at this time but it's right time to screen for GDM. You are right dot, uh, OBGY because that is the time when you do a glucose challenge test. Either 50 grams or 75 grams according to WHO it is 50 but most of the Indian scenarios we are using 75 grams glucose. Culture for Nicaea gonorrhea, there is no indication that you have to do it. You can do it as a booking test. Unless she's a high risk, you do it again at 30 to 36 weeks just to make sure that uh, at the time of delivery, the vagina is free of all these contaminants, okay? So that is it, guys. Uh, we finish here and uh, we will be doing this chapter again in the evening or maybe we can take one more question. Just one more question. In pregnancy... In pregnancy with increased MSAFP, which of the following should be done? What is MSAFP? It is maternal serum, alpha fetoprotein. Which of the following should be done? Repeat the measurement at a later date because it was high right now. You do a sonography, you do amniocentesis or you do termination of pregnancy. Tell me. There are two answers to this which will obviously confuse you. But what is the best answer? Hi Namika. Thank you, Lang Pokla. Okay, so Harsh, you want to repeat the measurement? Praveen, uh, please provide schedule of lectures in Telegram group. Yes, I will, Praveen. I will do that today. Okay, again, A, B, detailed scan to rule out anomalies. I don't usually get notifications for the evening section. Uh, Napoleon, the notifications for the evening section, the special classes, you have to come on the app, on the Unacademy Learners app. You have to download it on your mobile from your play store an academy learners app okay and then you have to check these classes by just simply using my code and what is my code my code is dr sonan so once you put this code you can unlock the class it is a free class totally free class and you can access it anytime even if you miss it today once you use the code you can always see the class and you can hear the class okay so the answer here is b and obgy you are right First, you have to check with the sonography. You don't have to jump into amniocentesis because that is what? That is an invasive test. You don't want to introduce infection. You don't want to cause miscarriage, okay? <coughs> so, that's it. The answer is ultrasound. And then we will see you again in the evening at 6 to 7 p.m. Till then, have your tea, have your coffee and uh, enjoy your day and study with me because just one month is left for the exam, okay? Bye-bye and take care.